You ready? I'm here with uh, Kevin Fourier. I hope I'm spelling and pronouncing it correct. He's the winner of the best of the best, uh, which is really quite an honor. I mean, it takes people years and years and years to reach a pinnacle of art where the act skill comes out and is recognized by the peers. And that's one of the beautiful parts that Swaya offers is that it is a showcase that very often is a springboard to all sorts of other opportunities mm. and artistic expression and the like. And uh, as you had mentioned a little bit earlier, this is not a traditional uh, art form. And maybe we can talk a little bit about what inspired you to get into a cloisonne design, or I imagine it's cloisonne. Um, actually, it is a traditional design uh, idea. I mean, I researched at the National Museum of the American Indian. I had a research fellowship um, because I had to prove that this inlay was from the Northern Plains. I was told that it, uh, uh, at one of these shows that it was a Southwest art form, and um, it isn't. And so I got this research, and I researched for three weeks on the East Coast from Boston, New York City, Philadelphia, and D.C. And I found a buffalo horn cup that was shiny like this, and it, it was drilled with holes all around it, up and down, and it inlaid with a real dark blue color, like lapis color. And it, Crazy Horse had made that, and those represented all the horses that he'd stole. And so, and, it, and some of the inlay had come out, and I used the same bl dark blue inlay that he used. And um, so, this is a, a really a tradition, I guess it's just that I've kind of upped the, the design more, you know, as a contemporary 21st century man. To innovate. Yeah. Wow. And, you know, I, um, I started out uh, just real simple earrings and things, and, and then I moved to doing the buffalo horn spoons. And on the back side of the spoon, I was able to do, like, um, I started getting a more of awareness about... Um, these injustices that are happening at home to native peoples and these awarenesses and it was also at a time when I had just sobered up and I I, I came upon artwork late I was 30 years old and so I was taking back my identity and who I was and I was starting to speak out about um, things that impact native communities at home and so some of the uh, subjects I've uh, addressed is identity um, lateral violence against each other. Um, yeah. I carved the, uh, the, the uh, lateral violence was all brown fingers pointing at each other like this. And it was called, um, um, once the oppressor oppresses the people long enough, all they need to do is step aside and we'll oppress each other. Yes. You know, and hopefully from those statements, people might see themselves on what they're doing and maybe create some kind of a change or we can talk about it. Um, have a value change. Right. Value and, change. and even the identity with myself being French and, and Lakota and Irish, um, I had things from the white relatives pointing at me, and it was a self-portrait, and things from the native community that were pointing at me. And they would say, get back to the res, get off the res, and I never quite fit. And so I did this self-portrait with these fingers. And... Um, the neatest thing about that piece was that the most engagement I get from people are young young kids. Um, the adults don't want to talk about that for some reason, but school kids will just like swarm and we talk about it. Sure. The kids are creating their own reality, mm -hmm. but the, one of the things is the need for elders to guide them. Right. And. Uh, there's a few people that are out there, like yourself, in that community of getting the next generation to understand the richness of the culture and the importance of carrying on, not giving up, never well, give up. And there's no better way than with art, you know? I mean, this is pretty, it's sitting on this pretty table, but yet there's a lot of discussion to talk about what Jody's done, or Suzanne, or Roxanne, I mean, Suzanne yeah, yeah. Earlier days. And she's a she's an artist, a lawyer, and she's a grassroots person right from Standing Rock. She's still struggling today. I kind of hope maybe some of the exposure from being on this belt, you know, 
people might find out about her and maybe help her in some way. I mean, she really struggles. But yet she's one of the most powerful women I know, yeah. and that's why she's on here. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. Good luck. All right. See you, you around. Yeah. Oh, I got one. You do